heart surgeon by profession and a philanthropist by nature, Dr. Gokhale and his whole team of surgeons, nurses, sisters are here on this road of recovery for those of us who have had heart bypass. It is my pleasure and my honor to welcome Dr. Gokhale. Dr. Gokhale, welcome to Heart Talk. Thank you, sir. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. First successful human-to-human -human transplant in 2004. First successful lung transplantation in September 2012. Successful heart transplantation on a 69-year-old man, oldest man in India, pioneer in minimal access heart surgeries. Tell me, as a surgeon to another, to be able to take a heart out of one patient, and place it and transplant it into another and get that to see that heart beating must be the pinnacle of your yes. medical career. Yes. yes. Tell me that moment, sir. What's it like for you? Yeah. Till that moment, it was there in the books. We have seen it happening. But once you do that, you get a feeling that yes, you could do something to your people. And uh, what has not been available for a long time, we could bring it to the local area so that people with the problem can get benefited. So far, we have been leaving these patients to just God. We are not doing anything. Now, at least there is another thing that can be done which we could not do before. Now, see a patient who is going to die in a few hours or a few days' time, getting up, walk around, and then taking care of his family, do everything like all of us. So difficult sometimes to say who underwent a heart transplant if you get that person among us. So looking at those people, it gives a joy which we cannot explain, we can only feel. Well, what made you take up heart transplant? I mean, what, what was there in your career that you said, I want to go ahead and do this heart transplantation? I mean, what led you to that direction? Well, yeah, see, I got trained in heart transplant or lung transplant program at St. Vincent, Sydney in uh, 1992 i went there st vincent st vincent sydney right. australia right that time they were they were doing the largest number of heart and lung transplants in australia and seeing those people recover from the deathbed walking around oh my god these people are doing it why can't we do it why can't it happen to our people here uh, that's the time and it took me almost from 1992 to 2004 Imagine 12 years to make it happen here. Once I came back, I was uh, looking at uh, stabilizing my practice, establishing myself, looking at the opportunity to take it to the next level. I mean, you see, we have to know that if we do the same thing as everyone is doing, we have not added value right. to our life, right. to this world. Right. I mean, just coming and going is not everything. Sure. I mean, by making things happen, taking it one step forward, I mean, it gives an immense satisfaction that we have done our part in this life. In this life. I mean, I always wanted to do heart transplant. When it happens in Australia and America, why not in India? Why not in my place? Right. And when it happened, I know I could do something. Fantastic. You know, um, I noticed that the philosophy in your practice, and that too in the hospital, is know your heart. Know your heart. Correct. And as a doctor myself, it's the last thing I ever, want, I ever put in my calendar. I mean, you know, we, I'm a plastic surgeon, I mean, we go out there, we see our patients. Yeah. And knowing your heart, in the medical profession at least, it's, it's something that, you know, and if it happens in a, to a doctor, what more the layman on the street? Yeah. And the reason why I ask this is because now there is this move towards educating the public. Okay. I know you are a, a okay. chairman of a charitable trust uh, that looks after the health and the, and the welfare of these patients, and I thank God for that. But tell me, um, how important is it to know your heart? To the ordinary layman. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. See, in this life, we take everything for granted. We only look for what we don't have. We often forget what we have. And the most important in this life, of course, is our health. You have health, you can do everything in the world. You can do everything. If someone can do something, I can do. If I can do something, anyone can do. It is possible only if we are healthy. Everything else can be created around that. But we take it for granted and we only request God to give us some this, that, always craving after things, forgetting to take care of what we have. And I keep seeing so many people coming here and then the young people at the peak of their life and suddenly they get a stroke, the whole family is devastated. Then suddenly you want to work on that, it's already too late. Of course, better late than never. 
but the only way we can make people stay do things what they want in life enjoy this world is only if it help them to stay healthy but uh, same thing estrogen time saves nine I mean, people have told that but we always think oh, all this uh, yeah. people keep talking and uh, I'm right. fine I'm healthy everything is fine and you don't put enough time to stay healthy True. to pass an exam we study for years yes to get a job we run around do so many things right. to send a ch our child to a good school right. we go around and do so much groundwork right. but to stay healthy what groundwork are we doing we think it is a, it, it is just the responsibility of god are sure. our people yeah. so i think it is time that we know something about our health then work on that when i say know your heart you know people take heart more serious than any other organ and i'm also a heart specialist I cannot tell keep your kidney healthy or brain healthy. What we say when we say keep your heart healthy, that helps the, all the organs in the body to stay healthy. What we talk about all the things which one need to do to stay healthy for the heart helps all the organs. It's overall health. Right. Even though as a heart specialist, how to say that keep your heart healthy. But what we talk when we say keep your heart healthy, it helps kidneys, it helps the brain, it helps the um, lungs all the organs if we follow these things it keeps them healthy so that we can live longer take care of our people it's yeah, this beautiful world life comes only once we don't know Absolutely. what happens next i mean I, I i fully agree with that life comes only once and uh, but tell me having what i mean in your record it's more than six thousand open heart surgeries and now i think it's nearly ten thousand what is the <laughs> pattern of coronary heart disease is it the same in india is it the same in malaysia it's the same, is it the same pattern everywhere else? I mean, I've been in Hyderabad now for what, three days? Uh. And I've been eating your Hyderabad biryani. <laughs> <laughs> and they tell me, uh, watch it, watch it. And I say, no, no, Dr. Gokhare is in town. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, as I was walking along the streets, everything is in oil, you know, they're yeah. frying everything yeah. in oil yeah. along the streets. Yeah. And I was telling my colleagues, I said, uh, no wonder he's busy, you know? Yeah. And uh, sure. so is there a pattern of disease? That is characteristic of you know, which is different in other cases. Oh, is it the same? No, no. the pattern is getting uh, different in this country. Say, I worked in Australia, I worked in America. We have seen so many people there. But generally, the disease in those countries happens after the age of 65, 60 years. Then slowly they get the problem. They come here, and then they have a nice, huge blood vessels. Heart function is often good. When you do bypass surgery, they do well. But here in India. Younger and younger people are getting affected. I have done a 22 year old person underwent bypass surgery with me. I'm sure that would not happen anywhere in the, uh, America or Australia, just like that. We have done a few cases. Right. At least 30 40 percent of my patients are below the age of 50 years. Really? Yeah. yeah. See, there are certain issues. The Indians, the arteries are small, and we have some problem like uh, good cholesterol levels are low, and the type of food we are eating these days. Previously, we were suffering from malnutrition, undernutrition. Now, the food, the, the improving economy, right. people are eating too much. Yeah. I can see, relate to that. Yeah, yeah. I see, the way you that. said, no, biryani, once you stop, you can't stop it. Yes. It's so delicious. Yes. But, but then, you know, see, all the good things in the world are dangerous to us. True. In fact, when the <laughs> chef came, they become too much. I told the chef, I said, you got some drugs inside here. <laughs> <laughs> And he had a good laugh. He said, no, 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 it's the best in the world. I said, yeah, but it's also the best in the world with your heart. You know, the best in the world means yeah. it's obviously the worst for the health. Yeah, anything, right <laughs> anything attractive I is agree. dangerous. Absolutely. So similarly, our people have got certain issues compared to others. And the genetic predisposition, the stress our people are going through. See, the, India is one of the few countries where there is a explosion of growth. When you say explosion of growth, you think oh, you calculate in that terms of how much people are earning, how many cars are there, but the stress behind puts a lot of pressure. About 30% of people are diabetics, 30% of people have got hypertension. Sometime back, one of the newspapers did a study on overall health of about 3,000 people at Hyderabad. Right. And they found only 30% are healthy. 70% really? of people have diabetes. High blood pressure, obesity, smoking, already a treatment for heart disease. Right. Well, you see, that, that is the extent of the problems we are facing. Mm -hmm. You know, diabetes and sure, hypertension sure. are mother for all the problems. Right. If we do the 
same thing as everyone is doing, we have not added value right. to our life, right. to this world. Right. But just coming and going is not a bad thing. Sure. Now, by making things happen, take it one step forward, it gives an immense satisfaction that we have done our part in this life. In this life. But I always wanted to do heart transplant. When it happens in Australia and America, why not in India? Why not in my place? Right. And when it happened, I know I could do something. take everything for granted. We only look for what we don't have. We often forget what we have. And the most important in this life, of course, is our health. You have health, you can do everything in the world. You can do everything. If someone can do something, I can. If I can do something, anyone can do. It is possible only if you have health. To pass an exam, we study for years. To get a job, we run around, do so many things. To send a chair, our chair to a good school, we go around and do so much groundwork. But to stay healthy, what groundwork are we doing? We think it is, a, it, it is just the responsibility of God or our people. So I think it is time that we know something about our health, then work on that. When we say keep your heart healthy, it helps kidneys, it helps the brain, it helps the um, lungs. All the organs, if you follow these things, it keeps them healthy so that we can live longer, take care of our people. It's just this beautiful world. Life comes only once. We don't know Absolutely. what happens next. I mean, I, I, I fully agree with that. Life comes only once. <laughs>40 years of age, we tell them to go for master health checkups. Whether you have symptoms or not, forget about it. Once in two to three years, get all the checkups, do a treadmill, check your cholesterol, check your blood pressure because about one third of the patients with the diabetes or high blood pressure, they don't know that they have it. When they go to the doctor for something else, this comes out. And often it is already late. So like this, you need to go for checkups earlier. You need to do that. And whenever what your uh, doctor said, he said, suppose they do CT angiogram, they find a small problem, what will you do? Right. I will tell you, Dr. Charles, start working on your body now. That is what I will do. Your preventive measures will start early. Yeah. Because if you start late, already you miss several years. These blocks in the blood vessels to the heart, they don't start overnight. They start as early as three to four years of age. Three so four years of age, age, meaning See, age. Children, children, children. They found that this is this is, uh, this is important to hear from a heart surgeon. Yeah. here. you know, not until fifty and then you find your block. This is like, See, a, like a cancer. Is, it's been going on for nine years before you can feel a small pebble in it. Correct. You know? See, you know when you build a new house, you build a new, you put in a new drainage pipe. Right. Everything looks good, but you take all precautions so it doesn't clog. But search after four years, five years you will find some deposits in spite of your precautions. Right. Suppose you don't take precaution, something will get inside, some clot or something will get blocked. If you remove it, 
it does not become totally normal. Still, there are small deposits, so that you take precautions so that they don't worsen. Right. Similarly, they found in children who died in accidents when they did postmortem, they found there are already blocks in the arteries. Really, the heart is pumping at a pressure of 120, 110 against the blood vessels. Over a course of time, the blood vessel will get damaged a little bit. In spite of the best mechanisms of the body has to repair them, deposits will stop. You take a syringe and uh, with a syringe you push saline against a wall with force. After some time, in the best of the walls, you will start showing damage. Same thing happens in the blood vessels for years. So they start at the age of 3 to 4 years. Depending upon the risk factors you have, suppose you have a diabetes, high blood pressure, you are obese, you are sedentary, very st stressful, high cholesterol level, have a genetic influence, you are eating bad food, deposits will grow fast. You are talking about me. You see, because this is <laughs> <laughs> this is what has been happening, yeah. and uh, can coming to all what you're saying, uh, the CT scan report, yeah, CT angiogram, report angiogram. says okay, seventy percent block. Now this is a two-dimensional report. Okay. How does that determine? Because I was told when my when my cardiologist saw, he said, "Don't worry, Charles. Yeah. CT scans overread. Yeah. You must have an angiogram." And the angiogram tells you there is a 70% block. How do you decide, okay, I'm going to stand this patient or I'm going to go for heart surgery. I'm a surgeon, yeah. I opted for heart surgery. Yeah. Yeah. How do you decide that? Yeah. You know, it's an excellent question. This is a major confusion among patients. See, it is not like maths. One plus one is equal to two. In this, a lot of medicine is, requires a lot of the experience behind it. You know that proverb, never go to a new surgeon and a old barber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Because the theory is different from the practice. But in general, there are some guidelines to help us out. For example, the block is, there are three blood vessels to the heart. Well, this is how the heart looks. Actually, it is on the left side of the chest, left of the breastbone, size of a closer fist. And uh, this has got three blood vessels on the heart to supply blood. One on the front, this is called left anti descending artery, and on the left side, this is called left circumflex artery, and on the right side here, there is the red thing that is called the right coronary artery. These arteries start from this big blood vessel that takes blood from the heart to the body, this is called aorta, and from here, the right comes directly from here, and the rest of the two start as one blood vessel is called left main coronary artery, which goes behind this vessel and divides into two branches. And these divide further, supplying many branches throughout the heart. So these three carry all the oxygen and blood to the heart. And whenever there is a block in one of these blood vessels, that is when people develop what is called angina or heart attacks. That means there is a block in this blood vessel. The blood is coming up to here but not able to go beyond that. And this muscle is crying for the blood. If it is something that is happening over a course of time, then they get some chest pain while they walk because the heart rate goes up and this muscle wants more blood supply. Yet rest, this blood supply is enough through the block. But when they walk, they require more blood supply. And sometimes this block suddenly, this whole muscle dies. This is called heart attack. Where is the obtuse? Yeah. When you say, there, see for technical things, we give the names. For example, this is called left anti descending artery that supplies 50% of blood supply to the heart. And it gives branches. These are called diagonal arteries. And there are some branches that go into the heart called septal branches of the LAD. And now similarly, the one on the left side called circumflex artery, it gives branches called obtuse marginal branches. For example, you see here, the blood vessel, the angle here is obtuse. That's why they call obtuse marginal branches. Yet the end, it divides into what is called postrolateral branches. Because it is the posterior side of the heart, and the lateral side is called postrolateral branches of left circumflex. Similarly, the, for example, this right coronary artery is there. When this is coming, there is a branch that comes from here. It is called acute marginal branch. When it comes down, it divides into multiple branches. Two important are posterior descending artery. It goes here on the inferior side of the heart, posterior descending artery. And there is one more branch called postrolateral branch of the right coronary artery. Usually it is the blocks in the major blood vessels, LAD, circumflex and the right coronary artery that are more dangerous. As the branches become smaller and smaller, they become like 0.51 millimeter. The blocks in there can produce small heart attacks, but rarely they produce risk to the life. 
So when you do a triple bypass, yeah. where would you put your... Yeah, generally. Uh, generally. Yeah, generally. See, suppose the LAD, we put one to the LAD, one artery from the internal memory artery, and then to the right coronary artery, sometimes a vein from here to the right coronary, or to the posterior descending artery. That is, it's the most important branch. Yeah. And one from here to the obtuse marginal branch, we put it. Right. So generally, when we say three blood vessels, they have blocks called triple vessel disease. When we put three grafts for all these, it is called a triple bypass. Sometimes this diagonal branch, or there may be two, three branches on this side, two branches on this side, which are big. Any blood vessel that is 1.5 millimeter or more, if it is blocked, we can do bypass surgery. Some people have five bypasses, six bypasses, but there are only three major vessels. That is because we bypass to the blocks in the branches of these blood vessels also, diagonal, and two or three, OM2, OM3, postural like that. So depending on the size of the vessel that is blocked. So heart is here on the left side of the chest pumping blood to the whole body. And this is a muscle. It requ also requires glucose, oxygen, all the nutrients. So what, does it, what it does is, when it is pumping good blood, oxygen blood through this major vessel, it supplies first blood vessels so that it stays healthy right. to support the body. This front and the left side one come as one from this called left main and divides into two blood vessels and the right comes from here. Suppose there is a block in the right somewhere here or in the left handed de uh, descending vessel here and the circumflex somewhere here and the heart function is good and it is a small block like you see the length is only say about 3 or 4 millimeters, 5 millimeters but the block is 80-90% you can put a stent, right. put a balloon inside like angiogram you put a balloon inside, yes. inflate it so the blocks get expanded Right. and then put a spring inside called stent that right. helps but for example you have a block in the left main right. stenting is dangerous right. similarly this front vessel is called widower's vessel yes this vessel supplies 50 percent of the blood supply to the heart these two supply 25 25 percent yet the beginning suppose this gets narrowed if you put a stand the failure chance is high and it gets blocked people can die right. this and this can excuse us but not this but and the left, left main. main so if there's a block in the left main and the block in the beginning part of this, for example, there are multiple blocks in the blood vessels, any of these vessels, because you can put in one stent, two stents, sometimes three stents. That, yes. But each stent has got a chance of re-stenosis, right. inherently. Right. You put one stent, 5% block. You put two stents, it becomes actually 15%. Each right. one within 5-5, five, five, but together, the cumulative effect becomes more. So you put five stents, in six months you are going to come back for surgery and you spend lots of money now, there is no point. So there are multiple blocks and there is, there is a major vessel which if it gets blocked, person can die. Already patient has got a heart attack, heart is weak. In those people, you do angioplasty, the long term survival is less compared to the results of the surgery. Right. right. So the, now the cardiological society, European cardiological society, American cardiological society, they are given clear cut indications that only when the blood vessel, single vessel is blocked <coughs> somewhere in the mid, then you can try angioplasty. But if there are multiple blocks, heart function will be in the left main there is a block then they better go for surgery unless there is a high risk with surgery sometimes people are say about 8, 90 years right. kidney is not working well or the lungs are not working well there are blocks to the blood vessels to the brain in that situation as a bailout procedure you may do one or two stents that is how once we do angiogram we know how many blocks are there where are they how serious are they and uh, what is the condition of the patient's body Based on these things, we make a decision. We right. should go for bypass or angioplasty. Thank you. Uh, let me just take this further. Sure. <clears throat> now, let's say one vessel mm -hmm. has got a block, yeah. seventy-five percent block, okay. and you put a stent, yeah. and the other two are pristine. Pristine meaning nice and, yeah, clear. Nice and clear. Now, I know yeah. a, a relative who has that, yeah. and they say, "I'm fine." Yeah. What is the chance of the other two getting blocked? I mean, over a period. I mean, you know, it looks yeah. beautiful. No, see, I've seen the angiogram. Yeah. But you have to remember, we are looking at the shadows. The tests which we have today are not perfect. Science is not yet perfect. We are going to get in future some more investigations that can make things better. So unless there is a significant block, you may not, and as you said sometimes, there are like two dimensional views, they are not real views. Yes. So many times a surgeon, they do ultrasound, they do x-ray, they tell it is like this. When you go inside, it's totally different. Maybe the cancer is totally spread inside. Right. which they, none of the tests have shown, so they underestimate the disease. If someone has got a block in one of the vessels, 
they are likely to get blocks on other vessels compared to anyone else. Right. Okay. And that's a good point. Th that is very important. Yeah, because that's already a disease that's process. Already disease. Is, so it doesn't happen in only one area. I keep telling my patients, body is full of blood vessels. Right. If someone has got a block in the heart, they may have blocks in the brain too, in the kidneys too. But where it is severe, they develop a problem. The severity is more here, they develop a heart attack. If severity is more here, they develop a paralytic stroke. If severity is more in the kidney, kidney will fail. If severity is more in the eyes, they lose the vision. If someone has a block in one blood vessels, they definitely have disease in other blood vessels too. Okay. So don't think that if someone has a single vessel, I mean it's very good compared to someone who has got three blood vessels. Definitely it's an advanced disease. But remember, you are not far away from them. Okay. Well, that's, this is uh, very important because I find that a number of people ask these questions, you see, yeah. and they battle with this, uh, I'm going to go for stents yeah. because it's less invasive than, you know, having an open heart surgery. Yeah, sure. But, um, but coming to talking about bypass surgery, I mean, I had my bypass one and a half years ago. Um, it was a shock to me, um, okay. total denial. Yeah. Uh, always thought that I'm okay, everything is fine, you're a doctor, you know, that kind of thing. But it was the most traumatic experience, uh, you know, lying on the table and getting shaved from my neck to my ankle. I felt like, you know, this was the first time I'm coming being born and, uh, and totally numb, you know. And I want to ask you that, uh, does it matter whether you got triple vessel disease or single in the sense of the number of vein grafts? I'm coming to vein grafts now. Um, I had my seven vein grafts taken for my thigh, four, four incisions. And I do vein surgery, varicose vein yeah. surgery. And I know that if I put my catheter in, yeah. slight rubbing on the vein, I've got a thrombus going on. Thrombus going. So tell me, the number of vein grafts that are put in. I know my, the guy who was sitting in the next room, uh. he had four bypass. Okay. I had three. Somebody else I know had five. Does yeah. it really matter how many vein grafts yeah. you put in? Yeah, yes, it matters. It matters. See, it is like the extent of disease we have. That means, Someone has got three blocks, four blocks, five blocks. The disease is already a little more advanced than someone who has got one or two blocks. So they have to take more precautions and they have to be more stringent about their lifestyle, number one. And number two is, you know, the beauty in nature is we think we are doing a great job as doctors and as engineers. But remember, at no time we are anyway close to the nature's designs. For a block in an artery, you take the vein from the leg and put them there to bypass. You know, see, the artery is working under pressure of 120 Its structure is meant for that. Whereas the veins, yes. the pressure is only say 3, 5, 10 millimeters of mercury. Yes. Yet that pressure, you bring that one and put under a stress of 120 by 80 millimeters of mercury. Some people are hypertensive, so 180, 160. Imagine a child doing an adult's work. What happens to them? You're, you're worrying me. <laughs> no, no, what I'm going to say I, I, is, no, no, but see, that's why, not to worry you, what I want to tell you is, whatever has happened, has happened. We cannot do anything. But if you take precautions these days, these vein grafts also can work for 15 years, 20 years. My father underwent bypass surgery with vein grafts in 91. Yes. That time, internal memory was not popular here. And today it is, for the past 20 years, he's doing fine. He, but he takes medicines regularly. He does walking. He watches his food. Precaution, what is there in the book, he follows. And he is now close to 90 years. Wonderful. Yeah. So what I mean to tell you is, right. it gives you warning signals. It tells you, Dr. Charles, so far it's okay. You took things for granted. But now watch out. You take precautions, I will take care of you. You still go in the same path as before. You take things for granted. I had blocks. Fortunately, doctor saw that. He did bypass. I said, now I'm close to normal. You think? Then we are going to face trouble again. Right. Some of these people who undergo bypass surgery, that's why they come back for second time, third time operations. So your part, you have to take care. But if you ask me, Dr. Gokhale, I'm taking all the precautions. I lost 18 kilos weight, you said, from 100 to 82 kilos. You are taking medicines, you are, talk, you are watching your food. But can you assure me that I won't get to have a problem? Right. I will be alright for the next right. 30, 40, what God has given me. Right. There is no way anyone can assure because multiple factors work. We do not know what exactly is the reason for these blocks to increase fast. 
only in 60% of the cases we know diabetes is responsible, obesity is responsible, the food you eat is responsible. In 40% of my patients, they are thin, non-diabetic, no high blood pressure, and they do meditation, they do walking regularly, and they don't eat non-vegetarian, very clear. We do not know. See, there are many mechanisms. They all play, multiple things play a role, and the end result is this. So when we tell a patient, it's not that we tell you just walk, do, do this. Depending upon the factors you have, we have to advise you that you have to do work harder. You have to be, cut down stress a little more. You have to modify your lifestyle for sure. Not just modify, you have to change your lifestyle. So depending upon the factors which are playing in our body. But the most important thing is, once you work on these things, you can stay healthy, have an excellent quality of life, and you enjoy this beautiful world. Do what you have come for. But here in India, younger and younger people are getting affected. I have done a 22 year old person underwent bypass surgery with me. I'm sure that would not happen anywhere in the, uh, America or Australia, just like that. We have done a few cases. Okay. At least 30, 40 percent of my patients are below the age of 50 years. Really? See, there are certain issues. In India, the arteries are small and we have some problem like uh, good cholesterol levels are low and the type of food we are eating these days, previously we were suffering from malnutrition, undernutrition. Now the food, the, the improving economy, people right. are eating too much. I can see, relate to that. Yeah, yeah. I see, the way you that. said, you no, know, biryani, once you stop, you can't stop it. Yes. It's so delicious. Yes. But, but then, you know, see, all the good things in the world are dangerous to us.